Hey everybody, this is Bo. We're back in the Sports Lounge, man. Listen, we've got a wonderful opportunity right now to have a chance to talk to Bernie Anderson, head football coach at Northern Michigan. How you doing, coach? Coach, uh, Bo, we're doing great up here. We have a little sunshine today and a little uh, nicer weather, so we like it. Yeah, I mean, it, Michigan has just been the total opposite from last year. I think last year I was laying out. I mean, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I was a lot warmer than I am right now. Well, we had... Uh warmer temperatures with a little snow to enjoy and right now we have the snow to enjoy and the temperatures won't allow us to go out to enjoy it so you're I, I, right it's been a tougher winter now when i lived here like 15 years ago i remember seeing ice shacks everywhere on the ice and this year i think i saw two or three i mean i'm trying to figure out where all the outdoor fishermen went to probably florida i'm not too sure but i want you to know from down in your neck of the woods uh, you think we we hunt and fish in igloos up here, and that's not true, no. So it's, it's 72 degrees up here, just like it is down there. All you need to do is stay indoors. <laughs> that's right. So, well, listen, okay. Coach, you've got so much good stuff going on this off season. You've got new recruits coming on. Letters of intent went out. You've got new additions to your staffing. We'd like to have you talk a little bit about the, all of that. Okay, great. Uh, let me start with the staff because I think you know that, that's a big starting point. You need to surround yourself with good people. We added two new coaches. We added Dan Metlack, whose grandfather coached at Crystal Falls for many years with won state championships. His father, uh, then his father coached over at Gwynn High School and won championships, and now he's the third generation. He played for me over at uh, Michigan Tech and was the uh, most valuable player in the Great Lakes Conference his senior year. So he, he comes with some great background, and, and he did coach with us last year at the quarterback position. He'll take over quarterback in wide receivers in a full-time capacity this year. And then, obviously, the big news probably in the last two days, at least in our Great Lakes Conference, is taking uh, the previous head coach of Saginaw Valley, Coach Randy Ari, who was a Northern Michigan alum. And uh, we just hired Randy as our defensive coordinator, and he's just a great addition. Uh, he had great success as a head coach in the Great Lakes Conference, and now he's our D coordinator, and that's going to make us a better team. You're going to have just a stacked team, it looks like, from top to bottom as far as coaching and the new recruits. Um, it's got to be pretty – I mean, I can hear it in your voice. You, it, it sounds like you're pretty stoked. It sounds like things are really shaping up for you all. Well, we have a ways to go, and, and we know how tough and difficult this conference is top to bottom. We discussed that earlier, and uh, you need to be – you need to be keeping up with the Jones or you're going to get left behind. And I think we're not where we need to be. We are not. Uh, we don't have the recruiting class that maybe competes to win a national championship just yet. But it is a process. It is one year at a time, and, and I like where we're going. Absolutely. Now, some of the letters of tent you got, uh, let's talk about those new, new students coming in. Well, the, the best part is I think uh, you know we bring in 25 new freshmen out of high school, 23 out of high school, two junior college transfers. Uh, we have 16 from the state of Michigan, only four from Wisconsin. We did pick up two from Illinois, one from Indiana, one from California, one from Minnesota. Uh, of that group, six are from the UP. You need to cover your backyard. I think uh, in the total, if you take the top six, seven players in the UP, I think we have six out of the top seven. So I really like that part. Uh, and it's a good group from the standpoint there. You know, we were careful in taking character and students we could predict academic success. And, you know, and then hitting the areas that uh, we need to fill on the depth chart. And, you know, between those three objectives, I think we uh, we accomplished our needs. And I think the most important thing is is that how many times have you done letters of intent where you're looking at, a, at an athlete on, on DVD that somebody has told you about, and you're all excited, and then you ask for the, you know, transcripts, and you've got to break that kid's heart. Dude, your grades, they're just not where it's at. it sure happens, and all too often, quite honestly. But, you know, and at the same time, I believe, unlike I tried to convince my parents when I was in school, that there is a, there's a high correlation to success on the field and in the classroom. And if you can get that student with that high academic uh, success, you know, there's a very good chance that there's a reason for it, and he can do it athletically as well. I think it's great because um, what you just said there is that you can always match up what they do in the classroom 
and how they prepare to how they prepare on the football field. Now, some students are phenomenal on the football field. And they could do it all, but in the classroom. But I see a correlation between their work ethic and their homework and how they handle it to sometimes their work ethic on the football field. It seems like it goes at times hand in hand. If there's a problem on the football field, there's some problem somewhere else in their um, school life. Well, there's you know there's always the exception. Yep. But I, I I totally agree that that there's no question that uh, you know doing what's right is not a sometime thing. You, you hear that quote on occasion, and you know doing what's right is not a sometime thing. Is exactly right. You you need to do it right all the time. And typically, the ones that do their homework all the time or do it right, you know, have success there, and they do their workouts right, and they and they are committed to it, and, and they have the results, and the success comes after hard work. So but yeah, there's I don't think that's a secret in life anymore. Now, Coach, you also got additions to the GLIAC. You've got Tiffin now entering into the GLIAC. It seems like your GLIAC is is pulling the best of the area into it. It's making it very, very bunchy now. It's <laughs> the GLIAC is, is is like you know. Do you have an opening for you know Central Washington now? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it you know the, the two teams that struggle the most probably would be Gannon and Mercyhurst. Yep. Uh, and they were the teams that most people had success. I'm not, I think they were both good programs and did some great things, but they did have the toughest time having success. Those are the two that move out. And Tiffin coming in, you know, is a program that has had recent success. And, you know, it just makes this conference, uh, you know, again, not that we needed to add some more strength to it and lose the, the people that were struggling a little bit, but it's a reality. We're at 12 teams, and I think there's 12 very good football teams in this league right now. Absolutely, and I'm just trying to figure out how it's all going to work in the framework with the scheduling because you're going to wind up being like the SEC where you're going to just pummel everybody and wind up beating beating each other up. It's you know it, I think the GLIAC's great for putting it there because it's going to build a a just juggernaut. But um, you know last year Grand Valley fell short in that juggernaut. You know Valdesta State stepped forward after Northwest Missouri beat them, and uh, it, it's a it's a lot of work. I mean you're going to have to come pounding every day. And what do you do right now in your off season to prepare for this upcoming season? Now that you got this juggernaut looking at you, well, it, it, <laughs> you know, playing good competition is good. I agree with you to a point. You beat each other up, and it's hard to get down the road. But when you know what you're going to compete with every week, it makes you go out and work harder. For a quick example, with our own players, and to answer your question, we went to a program now in the last six weeks that we're just completing to seven workouts a week. In other words, we go Monday morning to do our plyometrics and then bring them back eight hours later where they had eight hours to rest before we lift. And then on Tuesday, we do speed work. Wednesday, we lift. Thursday, we do speed work. Friday morning, we come back in at 6.30 and we do the the plyometrics again, get the eight-hour rest, and then lift later on Friday. And it's instead of going four or five times a week, now we're up to seven times a week, but we built rest periods in between trying to make sure that the plyometric work isn't backed up to the squat workout. And, again, it's it's a benefit to players, but, again, it requires more time, more effort, more work on the on the part of the players. So it's doing everything you can to compete with the competition you know you're going to go against. And, and the harder work, the more you put into it, the harder it is to sacrifice or, or to uh, surrender, I should say. And, uh, you know, it's, it's part of trying to get, to get to the top. Absolutely, Coach. Well, listen – um, now, what's in store for you? What do you exactly do now that you got this brand new group of team, brand new group of um, coaches? Um, when does the season officially start kicking off outside of the, the students doing individual trainings? Um, when is the start date where you can actually grab hold of the squad and start molding them? Well, March 24th, we'll start with spring football, and that's 15 total practices, uh, 12 of which can be in full pads eight of which can be uh, an awful lot of contact, committed to contact, scrimmages, and so on. And that will end April 19th for us. And that's 15 good days to kind of move the veterans off to the side a little bit, take that younger group and find out, you know, where they're at or, or who's going to step up. And then, then they're off for the summer. However, we'll have 50-plus players that will make a commitment to spend the summer up here. And then officially we'll get going to 